so I didn't record very well. I didn't realize I was standing right in front of the camera, but it is what it is. Uh, that was part of a home-built wrecker. It's part of an old Holmes. Oh, I think I'll show you here. Part of an old Holmes uh, wrecker unit. And uh, it was on a truck when I bought it. And I sold the truck, kept the bed, and I've had it on several trucks since. And I was using, if you guys remember that, that fifth wheel tow unit that the friend of mine made and I, I just struggled with it constantly so um, I just dug this out and stuck it on a truck and here we go um, so the project at hand the task at hand is taking this tank off this truck uh, this is a 2000 gallon non potable steel water truck it's most of the time you see this in construction sites or mining facilities or something like that there's there's a spray head here but that belongs here but it's inside the truck um, the way this thing works is you can fill it two ways let me back up all right you can cam lock onto here and you can fill up in the top see if you can see that up there see that spout I'll just get up there and show you All right, so you can take this spout, turn that cam lock a little bit, turn it this way, tighten it back down, and this is the opening to the tank, which is dark in there. So you can fill it that way, or you can fill it from uh, down below. Um, and I'm not a pro on these water trucks, so I may tell you something wrong. I'm only going by what I've been told, but of course it's dark. There's a pump down here, this feed line, and you can pressure fill that way into the tank. So the way these things work is <clears throat> there's a PTO on the transmission and a pump. The pump is meant to run these sprayers, okay? And these sprayers are adjustable as you can see here it twists this way and then this one twists this way so you can go you can go this way with it and then take this sprayer and go that way and it's air controlled there's a diaphragm in here so it's controlled by a, a switch air switch inside the cab just truck air pressure um, it's got sprayers on either side right here same thing air uh, air operated it has a spray hose I don't know how many feet that is I don't suppose it matters but it has uh, an electric motor to recoil the uh, the hose I don't know if it's power out or if it's just recoil but I'm not gonna fool with it uh, so what we have to do as you can see here there's bolts here look how thin that is look pretty thin there's two bolts there there's two more back in there you see those in the old fifth wheel mount because this used to be a road tractor and then there's two back here and that's what's on it either side now the majority of this piping stays on the truck when you lift the tank off so we'll take we'll take the the wiring loose here of course and uh we'll take the uh anything zip tied but there is one line here that we have to take loose that that hose uh, right there we have to take that one loose because that's part of the piping but it goes to the tank and then there's the the huge suction line up front that we have to take off and then the tank can come off I don't know if you can see that big suction line up here let's see yeah yeah kind of so we gotta take that loose. And then we can lift the tank off. The tank has lifting eyes here. And there's also um, two up on the top. So we'll probably use the ones on the top. We'll take it outside. And uh, either that or I'll move it forward. Use the crane to lift up one half and my forklift under the other half. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. 
But uh, first things first, let's get it all unbolted. This took all of about 15 minutes to do all these on both sides. And then I got the hose loose here and the big, huge, the huge suction line way up front. I got it loose. So we're ready to lift this thing off, but I need to, uh, I need to bring another piece of equipment over. I was going to use the crane. It lifts 2000 pounds, but I'm thinking this is probably near 4,000 by itself. So I may just use a great all uh, instead of that. I was going to use the crane and my forklift, but I think it might be better if I just use the great all and be done with it. Okay, so he's bringing this uh, truck out. We gotta get the tank off of it. It's pretty heavy. But it's all unbolted and all the um, water pumps and whatever, stuff like that is unhooked. So hopefully it'll be a quick, quick job. chained up okay it's uh, chained up and hopefully ready to come on Okay, so he's going to put it back in the garage because I guess he's supposed to take that hose reel off and there's some other pipe, piping and stuff that goes to the water tank that he has to take off. No sense of doing it in the rain. over a creeper, that wouldn't be good. That's probably good. off the truck, um, PTO and pump and all that, and they're obviously too heavy for us to carry, so we rigged it up on there, which is a big help. I think we're almost done, taking quite a few of the um, pipes and stuff on the bed, so we'll bring you back. 
We got the PTO off. Uh, the only thing left is that lights blind you, but there's uh, the PTO cable that comes up and then all of these control lines for the sprayer heads. They all come up into a box inside. So if it's bright enough, you can see it. There you go. This box and that PTO cable, we gotta take that off now. And that's it. And we'll have this out of here. That'll be done. Um, I took all the, everything off for the guy because he's gonna put it on one of his trucks. He's got a, a truck he's building. Um, so that's why we're taking off the pump, the PTO, the PTO adapter, the shaft, all the valving, all the pipes. Uh, we'll be taking these off too. For night, right now, I'm going to leave this ICC bumper on. Uh, it's an easy way to tow this thing uh, because I'm probably going to take it back to the to the uh, other house and park it there until I'm ready to do something with it. Because I got other things to do, and this really isn't on priorities right now. So let's finish it up, get the controls out. There's the PTO adapter, there's the PTO. Uh, they use that adapter because they needed to kick it just a little bit to clear some stuff on the transmission, and then it goes to the PTO. This is a control box for it. Um, it's got all these things. Um, it had front right and front left, but there was there was no, no sprayers on the front of this. Typically, or it's not uncommon to see sprayers on the front, but this truck just didn't happen to have them. But all right, everything's off. All the airlines are wound up nice. That's the bracket for the pump itself. Um, these are the brackets they had on the back. Look at that. Isn't that horrible? I mean, how difficult would that have been to drill a hole? Look, look at this crap. It's awful. Just awful. Look at this. Torch cut holes. They they added this frame extension here, and look at this. Look how horrible this is. It doesn't even match up. There's a obviously a bend in this frame right here, which I guess didn't matter to them. Um, they weld it in here. I don't know if there's filler in there or if it's weld or if it's just bent right here. But this used to be a road tractor, so right in this area right here. They added a section, which you can see right here. They welded here. That's diamond plate, been in a 90. Some more horrible holes. Just horrible, man. And the, I mean, this was a company that did this, that installed this on this truck. This wasn't, you know, John Q. Public doing it in his backyard. You can see where the fifth wheel used to be. More torch cut holes. Hacks. Look, that's actual drilled holes. I wonder if this isn't where the stack was mounted. Yeah, I'll bet you this exhaust stack had a mount right here, and it came out, and that was bolted to it. That's why those are nice holes, because um, those are punched holes. Yeah, those are punched holes, not drilled. You can tell because they're kind of tapered. So here's the airlines for the back of the truck, which that one's pinched, so it's pretty much worthless, need replaced. And here's the other one, you can see where the bracket used to be, where the airlines were. Um, I don't see the wiring harness for the trailer hookup that would have been here, I'll have to find that. But anyways, that's all we're doing with this truck for right now. Uh, this is gonna get the motor out of more than likely, it's going to get this motor out of this truck, the one we did the coolant leak on. Uh, we're probably going to put that motor into this truck. And we we're thinking about putting my little wrecker, wrecker bed on here because it's just about the right light length. It's, um, it's good enough horsepower. It's air brake. I'd like it to be a little bit longer because this is only, what did we measure this out at? Uh, no, I think there's... I can't remember now, but I'd like it to be a little bit longer because the longer we get, the better it's going to handle towing, even though we like it to be short. So we'll have to consider that when the time comes. This may be the one. If not, it might be one of them F750s. I'd like to use this because this is 
an ISM Cummins with a 10-speed transmission, power windows, power locks, air cruise tilt, air ride suspension, air ride seat, air ride on the rear, low pro 22.5s. You know, there's a lot going for this that would make it good. And you see these? See those? See these? See those? Hmm. I wonder where those are going. Anyways, so that's it for now. That's all we got. So what do you got to say, lady? If you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, please. And leave your comments down below. All right. All right, guys. That's the end of this one. We'll catch you on the next one.